पी एफ के वन फास्टो फ्रक्टो काइनेज वन विच इज अ मास्टर कंट्रोलर ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस इट कैटलाइज सेकेंड रिवर्सिबल रिएक्शन इन ग्लाइकोलाइसिस एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट रेगुलेटेड एंजाइम इन ग्लाइकोलाइसिस दैट यू शुड रिमेंबर एंड देर आर टू पॉजिटिव मॉडलेटर्स एंड टू नेगेटिव मॉडलेटर्स ऑन दिस एंजाइम टू पॉजिटिव मॉडलेटर्स आर ए एम पी एंड फ्रुक्टोस टू सिक्स बिस्पास टू नेगेटिव मॉडलेटर्स आर ए टी पी एंड साइट्रेट एंड सम बुक्स वो आल्सो मेंशन अबाउट फास्को इन ऑल पैरवेट बींग नेगेटिव मॉडलेटर ऑन पी एफ के वन हे एवरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर मुंगली सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल सो कंसिडर सब्सक्राइब सब्सक्राइबिंग टू दिस चैनल फॉर रेगुलर अपडेट्स so in my last video i have explained you hexokinase and glucokinase uh, reaction importance and all the uh, things related with the very first reaction in glycolysis mediated by hexokinase and uh, glucokinase so please watch this that video the link for that video is in the description below so in this video i'm going to explain you uh, the second important uh, enzyme in regular uh, in the glycolysis step is a phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme which is sometimes written as pfk1 enzyme so this phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme it is uh, the most regulated and uh, one of the uh, it is catalyzing one of the irreversible step in glycolysis and also it is referred as the master controller of glycolysis so why this enzyme is so important for uh, cells for uh, glycolysis you know glycolysis is a universal pathway for all our cells for energy needs so whether it is in uh, aerobic condition or anaerobic conditions in both the conditions glycolysis will provide energy needs for the cell so uh, the entire glycolysis it uh, if the cell has to control the uh, re, uh, rate of the glycolysis uh, either to increase or decrease the glycolysis so it has to be controlled over uh, pfk1 enzyme or phosphofructokinase enzyme what exactly phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme does it is going to convert fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and this is uh, energy dependent or atp dependent irreversible reaction because it makes a reaction thermodynamically a uh, spontaneous uh, spontaneous uh, reaction because there will be breakdown of atp terminal phosphate in the atp is broken down to release the minus 7.3 kilocals of energy and that energy is going to uh, make conversion of endergonic uh, reaction that is conversion of fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate that means the terminal phosphate that is coming from breakdown of atp will be attached to the first carbon in the fructose 6 phosphate to make fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and this makes reaction irreversible and this is the one of the most regulated uh, uh, reaction in glycolysis so and also let let's see like um, how this reaction is, how the gly, uh, fructose 1 6 bis uh, sorry fruct uh, phosphofructokinase uh, one enzyme uh, how it is regulated so phosphofructokinase one enzyme it is a tetrameric enzyme it has four subunits and that means it is uh, it is an allosteric enzyme so it is its activity will be modulated by um, allosteric modulators and also it has got a, a hormonal regulation indirectly so let me explain one uh, 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 both allosteric uh, activators and uh, allosteric inhibitors So first, let's uh, go with the uh, allosteric activators on phosphofructokinase one enzyme. So ATP, sorry, uh, allosteric activator. Uh, first one is uh, AMP, adenosine monophosphate. Whenever cell has lack of ATP, so whenever there is a, a decrease in ATP to AMP ratio, that means whenever there is increase in AMP in the cell, so this AMP, adenosine monophosphate. Um, it's going to act as a positive allosteric modulator by binding to allosteric activator site on pfk1 thereby it increases the uh, activity of phosphofructokinase one enzyme thereby it increases the uh, uh, rate of glycolysis thereby more and more glucose is oxidized into pyruvate and further into acetyl coa or lactate depending on the uh, oxygen availability okay thereby atp synthesis atp levels will be Uh, brought up in that particular cell so that's how amp can modulate the activity of phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme positively 
Now the second uh, positive modulator uh, which is most important in, uh, in the liver is uh, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate which is a positive modulator on uh, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. So I am going to come back to this uh, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate uh, just after uh, I explain you uh, inhibitor of uh, allosteric inhibitors of uh, PFK1 enzyme. So what are the two allosteric inhibitors of PFK1? ATP, excess ATP is in the tissue will have an allosteric inhibitory effect on uh, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. So ATP is a negative allosteric modulator. So because if the cell has sufficient ATP is already, there is no need to increase the rate of glycolysis. Okay, so that's why ATP will uh, have a negative effect on PFK1 and uh, decrease the uh, rate of glycolysis. Similarly, citrate. Citrate actually it is a product of uh, means it is one of the intermediate in the TCA cycle which is going on in the matrix of mitochondria. So when uh, TCA cycle is saturated, usually that happens when the person is in well-fed condition and dusting condition. When citrate moves out into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm, citrate will have a allosteric negative effect on PFK1. So simply when there is more citrate in the cytoplasm, that means it is a well-fed condition uh, where the energy needs are less. So that's why it will have a negative effect on PFK1 thereby decreases the rate of glycolysis. Now let me uh, explain you uh, the positive allosteric effect of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Now the fructose 2,6-bisphosphate it is a product of uh, another enzyme called PFK2. PFK2 is a phosphofructokinase 2 enzyme and its activity is uh, important in liver. Why? Because this PFK2 is a bifunctional enzyme. That means it has got a kinase uh, part and also it has got a phosphatase uh, function. So the kinase function is uh, referred as phosphofructokinase 2 and the phosphatase uh, uh, subunit or phosphatase function is referred as uh, fructose uh, bisphosphatase. Now phosphofructose bisphosphatase. So and now the phosphatase subunit whenever it is active, so what it does, it is going to, okay let me explain you the kinase subunit. Now the kinase subunit of PFK2 enzyme, whenever it is active, what it does, it is going to take some of the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate thereby it increases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate in the cytoplasm. So whenever the fructose 2,6-bisphosphate concentration increases, it will have a positive effect on PFK1 thereby PFK1 activity increases and the rate of glycolysis increases. Uh, whenever phosphatase subunit of PFK2 is uh, active at that time, uh, what this phosphatase subunit does, it's going to convert fructose 2,6-bisphosphate which is already there in the cytoplasm back into fructose 6-phosphate thereby it decreases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and the decrease in concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate will have uh, basically doesn't have a uh, positive effect on PFK1 thereby PFK1 activity is not increased. Now two hormones are going to control the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate in the cytoplasm of especially in the liver and that is insulin. Insulin is going to increase fructose 2,6-bisphosphate concentration and indirectly will have a positive effect on PFK1 whereas uh, glucagon, glucagon decreases fructose 2,6-bisphosphate concentration thereby indirectly it will have a negative effect on glycolysis. So I am going to talk about PFK2 enzymes separately in my next video or maybe in my future video I will uh, give the reference for that uh, when as and when I will do that video. Okay, so this is all about uh, PFK1, phosphofructokinase 1 which is a master controller of glycolysis. It catalyzes a second irreversible reaction in glycolysis and this is the most regulated enzyme in glycolysis that you should remember and there are two positive modulators and two negative modulators on this enzyme. Two positive modulators are AMP and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Two negative modulators are ATP and citrate and some books will also mention about phosphoenol pyruvate being a negative modulator on PFK1. Okay. So coming to a little bit about uh, clinical relevance of this enzyme. So uh, when PFK1 enzyme is mutated, 
uh, especially in the red blood cell and in the skeletal muscle, it will give rise to a disease called Torreus disease. Torreus disease is classified under uh, glycogen storage diseases. So whenever PFK1 is uh, decreasing its activity or it is not uh, conducting its activity, fructose 6-phosphate builds up and that fructose 6-phosphate go back into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate can be diverted into other metabolic phase of glucose 6-phosphate and that is uh, glycogen formation by making glucose 1-phosphate and glycogen accumulates and if PFK1 uh, so accumulates in the liver uh, in the skeletal muscle so that's why it is referred as glycogen storage disease it can give rise to um, signs and symptoms of uh, say ex exercise intolerance myopathy uh, rhabdomyolysis uh, those kind of things which is kind of uh, similar to McCurdle's disease now uh, pfk1 being deficient in uh, red blood cell so that can decrease the energy needs of RBCs because glycolysis is not going on that means red blood cells can break open and it can lead to hemolytic anemia so that means in Torreus disease there will be uh, skeletal muscle signs and symptoms and also breakdown of red blood cells giving rise to hemolytic anemia and increase in bilirubin leading to jaundice so this is a clinical relevance related with uh, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme so that's all about uh, PFK1 enzyme. I hope this video helped you in uh, knowing details about PFK1 enzyme and how it is, why it is referred as a master controller of glycolysis. Okay, so uh, if you like this video, uh, please give a thumbs up and if you have any question, uh, give me, uh, ask me that question in the comment below. I can, I will answer it as uh, best as I can. So that's about it and I'll see you in my next video. Till then, you take care.